Welcome to another episode of Fill in the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Corey. Yo. Corey, what do you know about clairvoyance? Uh, not enough really, but I like the the ESP stuff. You what, know? What's the ESP stuff? Or like extra paranormal psych or something like that. It's sensory, extra sensory extra, 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 perception. Sensory perception. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like just being able to like see paranormal type things or maybe do like future event type. Like know. being able to kind of like see the future. Yeah. Like or glimpse. feel somebody's like presence presence but i feel like i'm lobbing a lot of things into one so i don't know quite have, enough have you ever thing. experienced the type of clairvoyance if i'm lobbing all that into that if that's what clairvoyance is then yes i like that like i know clairvoyance from like skyrim or oblivion or those types of old kind of medieval type games where it was very very like that was the main thing back then wizards all this time period type stuff that we've had in our own history has actually dealt with clairvoyance um mostly like there's a certain spell you can like conjure up or be able to cast that creates a path that shows you to where your goal is or shows you where your checkpoint or whatever you're trying to go for is it's like a new sense or what we can call a false perception so when just by saying that it's going to give you a little bit of information on what we're going to be learning about clairvoyance so clairvoyance, from French clair meaning clear, and voyance meaning vision, is the alleged ability to gain information about an object, person, location, or physical event through extrasensory perception. Any person who is claimed to have such ability is said accordingly to be a clairvoyant, one who sees clearly. So what? where would you okay. see a psychic coming in with this? If someone had the psychic ability of clairvoyance, maybe... Um, I know a couple people that have been able to pinpoint, like, see a, a dream of someone that's gone missing and then be able to pinpoint their location to, like, a radius, kind of like mm -hmm. remote viewing a little bit, mm -hmm. like where you can kind of use different pinpoints and somewhere in that general area. It's how a couple people, like, were able to find, like, dead bodies and stuff. They'll call into the cops anonymously and be like, the body's located here, and they'll hang up. And I think it's all related, like, the whole remote viewing and... And astral projection and clairvoyance. I think maybe like they, you know, there's different functions that you can do within that, but I feel like that's all ESP, you know, related. And, you know, it, I think it's a very blurry thing. Like you could have a little bit of some, you know, some aspects of it and you know, not of others. I think when it comes to like the types of perceptions that people have, you know, like the touch, eyes, you know, those types of things, like being able to see things, being able to mm -hmm. hear things. Mm -hmm. There's like the musical ear of our syndrome where like someone that goes deaf starts seeing notes and seeing music like through their eyes, like able to see that wavelength and mm -hmm. stuff. Kind of like phantom limb where someone loses a limb and they can still kind of feel it there and still get the pains of it there and being able to like feel like they can still move their hand or something. It's these types of perceptions that I don't know if it's a cross wiring between our brain that might be fused, or maybe someone has an extra sense. We know about people that can talk to ghosts and see ghosts. Mm -hmm. It's hard to think that someone can't pinpoint or be able to, you know, gain information on something just by being able to like grasp an object. You know what I mean? Be able to see the history of it. When I oh yeah for sure. oh dude that's happened to me with Salvia. That's clairvoyance. Um, you're just experiencing yeah. it through a hallucinogenic drug or a type yeah. of uh, altered state. Yeah, Salvi's so definitely done that to me. Well, explain it to me. Um, like, what, What for example, have I, you grasped? I remember, I remember one time uh, I was kind of coming off of it or whatever, which is a quick thing. It's over like 15 minutes or whatever, but, um, but it can feel like eternity. Um, and I just went to go to the fridge and get some juice or whatever. And I think it was carrot juice. That I, I like I wouldn't take a swig of and as soon as like it hit my lips it was like I went through everything that that carrot went through to become that juice like it just all times rewound from the point of like when it got to my like lips to like when it was sold at the store to where it was you know shipped to where it was farmed to when it was in the soil to when you know, I remember something dealing with the birds. I feel like either a bird ate it or, you know, some bird shit that was in the soil. Like, it, it like it went all the way back. And Are you telling me you experienced a carrot's life? 
like yeah like a, the carrot's life like and s super far back like i re like there was a bird shit in there like somewhere and i remember that being like either the bird ate it or that was part of the soil it was crazy it was crazy and amazing do you think it was an experience that someone should like anybody that has never experienced something like that be able to experience with anything for sure I wonder what would be behind a cream soda, what the history right, yeah. behind that would be. We need to find out. When are you going to do a Great Value podcast? There is no information on this cream soda. It's the New World Order. When are, you gonna have a, when are you going to have a podcast with the New World Order? I'm waiting for someone to want to do it. All right. Everyone's too afraid. Knocking on those doors. Well, Claire... Well, wait, oh, wait, wait. One thing I was going to say was this clairvoyant... Like, one thing I think of when I think of a clairvoyant is I think of, like, that uh, stereotypical... Gypsy crystal ball lady, you know what I mean. And Those that, are a type and, of. That's what I think of when I hear the word clairvoyant. That's what pops in my head. We well, have to shift through what's bullshit and what's a real fortune teller or right, someone that teller, sees, yeah. foresees the future. Well, claims for the existence of paranormal and psychic abilities such as clairvoyance have not been supported by scientific evidence published in high impact factor peer reviewed journals. Parapsychology explores this possibility but the existence of the paranormal is not accepted by the scientific community parapsychology including the study of clairvoyance is an example of a pseudoscience so i say physics or psychic or psychics who have this alleged perception explain it like a skill you can learn to strengthen by practicing certain tricks and techniques to really kind of focus like a muscle like how you're able to work out a muscle and it gets stronger and can recover quicker. Same thing with your clairvoyance. If you choose to ignore it, you choose to deny the skill and its growth. But if you choose to hone it and try and find ways to amplify it or, you know, read books to educate yourself more on the fact of maybe someone that has these. How many books have you read that were something you believed in? Another person, like it wasn't accepted or it wasn't a mainstream type thing that seemed, kind of seemed like it might be like fake. But then someone writes a book on it, you're like this is exactly what I've experienced. And you realize they're giving you like an information, like an instruction manual on how to control your abilities. Same thing with a lot of psychic books where people find, oh, that's just, that'd be cool if it was real. There are some people that are able to see ghosts. There are some people, I don't d doubt that they can't do it. I believe there's a lot of people out there that say they can when they can't. Mm -hmm. But I believe there are true people out there that have a type of extra sensory perception. Totally. And also, I think there's paranormal events that happen that you don't even have to have ESP to happen. You know, like some people might just have a certain type of... Um, uh, frequency of sorts that just attracts certain types of paranormal activity well same thing the most common thing that's a, technically a psychic ability is deja vu nobody talks about like mm -hmm. and we've all experienced deja vu a feeling like something's ever happened before mm -hmm. whether it, we actually have experienced it and it's just subliminally like locked away like oh and then you just remember it that's the whole idea with deja vu that's what scientists say is you're just remembering something you forgot that was just like a like a glimpse into a memory but um Children experience these perceptual abilities more than adults. It seems it is lost at a certain age. I believe it's because of the creativity throughout either society factors and kind of like an age thing of like finding out, you know, Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah, all these yeah. different things are real. Your brain starts to kind of shift out like maybe we should ignore some of these things and but eventually the muscle just fades away. Yeah. And we, yeah, we kind of discouraged over time a few things. Our imaginations are slowly changed into more like utilitarian or like industrialized you know like gotta work you know gotta think about you know your education these sorts of things yeah you have recess and sports and things like that but like it it changes over time from being more just you know free time and life you know and maybe kindergarten where but like otherwise like i i always say that like um when i was younger i used to be able to, i could have played war with a tree like like for hours probably your give, imagination is just give it's me a stick, untouched right give me a stick and my i can just literally imagine whatever i want to do and play for hours and we definitely lose that over time i don't remember where i was going with that but well i mean i think just because the world and society kind of fades on our imagination and, and kind of uses it to suppress like society's kind of it all pro suppressing your imagination and creativity making someone what that individual spark that some people really can take oh. the time and in noticing 
the ESP side of things. So like with kids, like I think it's the same idea, like how we're kind of slowly changing our, our imaginations as we mature. The, you, you know, it always freaks us out when we hear like kids talking about their past lives or like, or when they're, they have this imaginary friend and it's like this kid that died, but you find out it was this kid next door like 30 years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, what? So I think that that relates to what you're talking about. Well, the usage of this, the pertaining to the ability of clear-sightedness, clairvoyance refers to the paranormal ability to see persons and events that are distant in time or space. It can be divided into roughly three classes. Pre-recognition, the ability to... Pre precognition? Yeah, precognition. <clears throat> The ability to perceive or predict future events. Okay. Retrocognition, the ability to see past events. And remote viewing, the perception of contemporary events happening outside of the range of normal perception. People with clairvoyance, um, they basically see this type of perception throughout their own viewpoint. They don't really see it from another's perspective. You only see it like if you were experiencing it yourself. So if you were there, like if you're trying to locate someone that might have gone missing in your you're walking the streets. You're not seeing it from their perspective. You're seeing it from your own perspective. Mm. Like oh, you're oh, walking oh, the yeah, street yeah. and you can witness the events you're happening. You're tapping into somebody else's thoughts. You're tapping you're into your own. around their, like, what the reality is that they're in. Yeah. yeah. So the usage of tools such as crystal balls, ruins, um, tea leaves, and tarot cards are also a, a form of what helps clairvoyance use their powers. So much like you were saying with crystal balls and yeah. those types of things, too. Yeah. Well, let's talk about our history of what we know to be clairvoyance. Throughout history, there have been numerous places and times in which people have claimed themselves or others to be clairvoyant. A number of Christian saints were said to be able to see or know things that were far removed from their immediate sensory perception as a kind of gift from God, including Columbia of Iona, Padre Pio, and Anne Catherine Emmerich. Jesus Christ in the Gospels is also recorded as being able to know things that were far removed from his immediate human perception. Now, do you believe this might be, this is a number of Christian saints that mm -hmm. was in our history. That's not hard to believe if you're a religious person. Maybe religious, sure. But if you're a psychic if person. You're a skeptic. If, if you're, you're if you're a person that believes in a psychic abilities and not into oh. a religious faith, mm -hmm. that's easy for you to accept that there are these types of, yeah. you know, what's to say that these religious figures that had these powers that could only be gifted by God weren't a paranormal ability or psychic ability interpreter mm -hmm. or some type of person yeah. that could experience these things or who's to say that the psychic people aren't blessed with a gift from God? I'll play devil's advocate there. It's just the whole aspect of why are we denying? different people's thoughts and different pe people's feelings and beliefs because it doesn't fit ours. That doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But society falls to that every single day. Yeah. That's why I'm, I, like, I like to say it's more, it's better to be open than closed off. For sure. So in other religious, similar stories of certain individuals begin, begin, beginning able to see things far removed from their immediate sensory perception are commonplace, especially with pagan religions where oracles were used. Prophecy often involved some sort of clairvoyance, especially when future events were predicted. Throughout major Greek mythology and other types of things, there's people going, talking to oracles, the mm -hmm. leader of Sparta going to talk to oracles for this keen mm -hmm. information on battles that are going to happen, ways to win, ways to overcome their challenges. It always seems like a common thing with people is we're always looking for that that second step ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people that plan, some people say they live in the moment. You truly are planning your next move constantly, and that's well, what makes well, society and progress a great thing. I wonder what happened if you're, this would be a lot of fun, like fun experiment, just to be a, a psychic Right, that brings people in, but all they they don't actually they're not a psychic, and all they do is tell people you're gonna die in the next few days, or like you're gonna die in three months, or you're gonna die in whatever, and then kind of reading see, a fake fortune. See, yeah, and see what those people do with those three months. Within those three months, it would be the same thing if I wrote on a card the day you're going to die, right. and then you went and saw that. Would you want to see that, or would you totally just? I don't, you know, I don't think you want to see that. It but depends at on the, the same person. Time, you want to know if you're not going to die, right? You know, it's so people go to get their fortunes read because at least they know they're going to be alive. But what is it? What drama are they going to have in their life? 
are they going to be rich? Are they going to be married? Are they going to fall in love? Are they going to be, you know, homeless? Are they we experienced be... that today when we opened up a fortune cookie and it told us what, right. what did it say right. to you? Yours was like a love Mine is... wasn't even like a fortune really, but that's right. It was so good. It was something like love is the best thing in the universe or something like that. Or love is right in front of your life or something or some, yeah. something. And like I was like, yeah, that's me. Best thing in life. I'm right in front of you. That's why. Yeah. But then there's like mine. That, love your eye. Yeah, love you too. That, then there was mine that was like, you're going to have great fortune in these types of things. And then you get the random one that's like, help, I'm stuck in a Chinese fortune cookie making factory. <laughs> Um, let's, well, in most of these cases, however, the ability to see things was attributed to a higher power and not thought of as an ability that lay within the person himself. Seeing as a gift from God, there's many gifts on this earth or objects on this earth that have a type of godly, um, I guess, invoking to it or power to it. There's the thing known as the Nantos cup. I don't know if you know what that is. I we could say that for another podcast, but it's the Holy Grail. It's the suspected okay. Holy Grail. It's known to have healing abilities. Okay. Well, in Jainism, in Jainism, clairvoyance is regarded as one of the five kinds of knowledge. The beings of hell and heaven, divas, are said to possess clairvoyance by birth. According to Jain text, Sir, I can't even say that one, but Sarvath Skididi, this kind of knowledge has been called Avadi, as it ascertains matter in a downward range or knows objects within limits. So being able to kind of like, as long as you know some of the history behind the object, you can kind of predict what the outcome is going to be for it. Like, obviously, I know you're into computers and stuff. I could probably guess you'd be doing something with computers later in your life, hopefully not working at Food Lion or something. Well, but nothing wrong with that either. Yeah, nothing wrong with those guys that go and hate their life because they're out in the snow pushing carts and... Doing it for us. Yeah, doing it for us because no one wants that job. Well, let's talk about parapsychology. Some early research, the early record of somanistic... Stama, snaman, these words, though. The somanabulistic clairvoyance is credited in 1784 was treating a local dull-witted peasant named Victor Race. During treatment, Race reportedly would go into trance and undergo a personality change, becoming fluent and articulate, and giving diagnosis and prescription for his own disease as well as those of others. Clairvoyance was a reported ability of some of the mediums during the spiritualist period of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and psychics of many descriptions have claimed clairvoyant ability up to the present day. Clairvoyance experiments were reported in 1884 by Charles Richet. Playing cards were enclosed in envelopes and a subject put under um, hypnosis attempted to identify them. The subject was reported to have been successful in a series of 133 trials, but the results dropped the chance level when performed before a group of scientists in Cambridge, J.M. Pierce and E.C. Pickering reported a similar experiment in which they tested 36 subjects over 23,384 trials and did not obtain above chance scores. Mm -hmm. So well, the I'd idea that... that about say maybe like you know it's you can talk it up to an easy interpretation for someone that's listening could be we played rock paper scissor we played a hundred games mm -hmm. and I just you kept doing scissors or kept doing something and Chance. I just kept yeah I just, it's it's all based on luck unless mm -hmm. you really just stick with scissors and then I'm gonna try and go for everything not but maybe three up paper every now and again trickier or something well let's go <laughs> right, let's do it ready rock paper scissors. Oh, uh, yeah, see, that's one. Let me get to two or three now. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah, we guess forever. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Uh, that's two out of three. Well, you won. So you must be clairvoyant. You knew what no. I was going to throw. So, but, hey, but hang on. There is, um, I want to say it's Noah, like neurological something. I, I don't remember what it is, but there's definitely like. You mean neurological empathicity? No, but there's like some there's some institute that it that researches this specific thing, like paranormal psychology and like uh, clairvoyance things like that, and they've done some like very um, good scientific like scientifically sound you know double blind whatever experiments that placebo effects yeah yeah to like test certain things with you know your your consciousness and your thoughts and actually affecting reality or vice versa there's and there is there is some stuff i feel like that can that's 
does show a positive like truth to it. Well, throwing an example out, imagine if I grabbed a baby from birth and raised it knowing that it, telling it it was a psychic being and knowing that it could predict the future. How long until this being completely, a, a, like its whole life mm -hmm. as an adult now, Believes is it. actually able to touch a psychic ability or have a psychic ability based on its belief and knowingness of its whole entire life, knowing that this is what it's going to be. You, wait, you're saying, would it happen or? Would it occur? Would yeah, that happen? I don't think we really would know. that cause the brain to function in a way that might create a psychic ability? I it might say be yes. a, like we have forms of mind control. Is it hard to think that we can use psychic abilities and create a psychic ability, or is that just a gift I or say something yes. we're born with? I like to think so. That'd be pretty cool. Start an army of people like that. I don't think it's going to be as like great or immediate, but I'm saying like evolutionary, like ev evolutionary will change. I was going to say evolutionarily. I feel like it would work you know if you kept doing that over generations over generations i over think generations, it's a good placebo effect you would like t if i give you a sugar pill telling you it's like the cure to your aids or whatever and then you start getting better is that your belief in it or is it because like maybe sugar's the cure to aids well but, i think your environment influences your actual development like you but know if like I plan the trees are slightly taller you know we grow taller to get the fruit, you know, or like the... Well, the, adapting, but... If the flowers' tubes are, lo are longer, you know, the bird beaks are longer to get to the pollen. Well, that's actually. different from what I'm trying to say, though. What I'm saying is if I planted a placebo in your mind based on your whole life of being able to be born from um, psychics, like being long... You're born from a long line of psychics. You have this psychic ancestral power that yeah, flows yeah. through your blood. Even though that complete, complete comport horseshit, yeah. it... You believe it, and then what happens to say it, maybe it affects you in a way that you, since you believe it so much, it becomes a placebo effect where you're actually able to do it. Right. And I'm crazy? saying, I'm saying, I do think that something would happen, like some sm small thing, maybe hardly even noticeable, but if you did that over like a ton of generations, I do think something would happen that's apparent where you're like, holy shit, we're X Men or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, Ivor Lloyd Tuckett. In 1911, and Joseph McCabe of 1920 analyzed early cases of clairvoyance and came to the conclusion that they were best explained by coincidence or fraud. In 1919, the magician P.T. Selbit staged a seance at his own flat in Bloomsbury. Or Bloomsbury. The spiritualist Arthur Conan Doyle attended the seance and declared the clairvoyance manifestations to be genuine. A significant development in clairvoyance research came when J.B. Ryan, a parapsychologist at Duke University, introduced a standard methodology with a standard statistical approach to analyzing data. As part of his research into extrasensory perception, a number of psychological departments attempted to repeat Ryan's experiments with failure. W.S. Cox, 1936, from Princeton University, with 132 subjects, produced 25,064 trials in playing card ESP experiment. Cox concluded there is no evidence of extrasensory perception either in the average man or the group investigated in any particular individual of that group. The discrepancy between these results and those obtained by Ryan is due either to uncontrollable factors in experimental procedure or to the difference in the subjects. Four other psychological departments failed to replicate Ryan's results. It was revealed that Ryan's experiments contained methodological flaws and procedural errors. So the whole idea, like, I believe that's just because, like, these departments couldn't find anything based on the experiment, so they immediately chalk it up to there's just, this guy had a flawed process. That's why he got the answers he wanted, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the whole aspect, you didn't well, obtain those true. results. That could be true, too, but yeah. playing devil's advocate, right. you know, the whole right. idea is, hey, maybe they were just, since they couldn't do it, they wanted to prove it was false so they don't look like idiots, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> Eli... Eileen Garrett was tested by Ryan at Duke University in 1933 with Zener cards, certain symbols that were placed on the cards and sealed in an envelope. She was asked to guess their contents. She performed poorly and later criticized the test by claiming the cards lacked a psychic energy called energy stimulus. Oh, that's, oh, that's a bunch of horse to poopy right there. She said she could not perform clairvoyance to the order because of them lacking a certain energy stimulus. Oh, word. The parapsychologist Samuel Soule and his colleagues tested Garrett in May 1937. Most of the experiments were carried out in the psychological 
Laboratory at the University College London, a total of over 12,000 guesses were recorded, but Garrett failed to produce above chance level. In his report, Sol wrote, In the case of Miss Eileen Garrett, we failed to find the slightest confirmation of Dr. J.B. Ryan's remarkable claims relating to the alleged powers of extra perception. Not only did she fail when I took charge of the experiments, but she failed equally when four other carefully trained experts took my place. Now, could that be playing devil's advocate to this guy saying that, you know, that it's obviously a fake? Is it because maybe she had felt like she was too much pressure, she couldn't focus on clairvoyance? Or was it just someone claiming they had a psychic ability and really didn't, and then after they were proven wrong, they were like, there's no way I could be wrong on it. There's no way. There's no way. It's just making up a bunch of horse poopy. It's making a it's 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 a long walk for a short drink of water. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Yeah. So let's talk about remote viewing. Remote viewing, also known as remote sensing, remote perception, telekinesis, and traveling clairvoyance, is the alleged paranormal ability to perceive a remote or hidden target without support of the senses. A well-known study of remote viewing in recent times has been used by the U.S. government-funded project at the Stanford Research Institute during the 1970s through the mid-1990s. In 1972, Harold Puthoff and Russell Targ initiated a series of human subject studies to determine whether participants, also known as the viewers, could reliably identify and accurately describe salient features of remote locations or targets. I actually did a fill-in-the-blank about this one. It's called the Jedi Project. You ever heard of the Jedi Project? Project. No, what's that? It's basically based on the um, idea of the movie The Men Who Stare at Ghosts with uh, George Clooney, uh, where these people could, uh, basically they were called, um, I think it was like the Earth Warriors Movement or something. They used these types of drugs to kind of focus the psychic ability and train these psychic abilities. The whole idea was to attempt to create psychological warriors that we could use for war purposes based on Russia's um, I, our thought that Russia was already ahead of us in this field department. We're like, hey, we might as well do this and try and beat them at it. Same thing with the space race. But it was in Fort, it was in, um, what was it, Fort, something out here in Maryland. It's, it, it's just nuts to think that, like, th these types of people could predict these things. Basically, in the movie, George Clooney, Kevin Spacey, and, like, they're, they had to guess what was in this this um, secret like mail or bank vault type thing, and every, um, everyone guessed. One dude said a cup. One dude said a pencil. They all got it wrong. But then the one dude said it's Abraham Lincoln sitting in a chair. Now this envelope box is the size of a normal mailbox thing, so it's not huge enough to fit Abraham Lincoln in a chair. And then they open it up. It's an envelope. They open up the picture that was in the envelope. And it's Abraham Lincoln, the picture of the memorial thing that was at it. And they're like, yeah, you got it. There is a chance that someone out there, that was a one in third experiment, like one in three people. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that there's a small percentage of the population, just like truth wizards, people that are able to detect lies at a certain ratio higher sure. than others. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's out there, man. I'm not completely uh, disclosed to it at all. Right. The only problem is when you're using remote viewing experiments that were carried out in the 1970s at this research institute, there were 35 stu studies unable to replicate the results investigated on the procedure of the original experiments. The fact that people are trying to recreate these experiments and getting way different answers. That's and, important. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it, like... You a, have to have proof. That's <clears throat> why science is amazing. Because the more trials you do, the more data you have and the data doesn't lie. Yeah, just because there's well, one specific case though, I think that might be an anomaly too. Mm -hmm. You know, playing and anomalies are can be true. Obviously if I flip a coin heads and tails, it's gonna be a fifty fifty chance, right? Mm -hmm. Well if I have a coin that's double heads and I keep flipping it, oh I get a hundred times. If someone produces the same experiment, the reason why they're doing that is to try and make sure they get the same result, seeing if this right. is a logical thing. Right. But what happens to say if I flip it and the coin lands, uh, yeah, dead center. That's your anomaly. Dead center. So then there's no heads or heads. It's mm -hmm. just dead center. Mm -hmm. That's an anomaly. I doubt that rarely. No, it's only gonna happen one out of two million times. Or point zero 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 one percent chance of that ever happening. Mm -hmm. So, 
1980, Charles Tart claimed that a uh, rejudging of the transcripts from one of Targ and Puthoff's experiments revealed an above chance result. Targ and Puthoff again refused to provide copies of the transcripts, and it was not until July 1985 that they were made available for study when it was discovered they still contained sensory cues. Marx and Christopher Scott wrote considering the importance of the remote viewing hypothesis of adequate cue removal, Tart's failure to perform the basic task seems beyond comprehension. As previously concluded, remote viewing has not been demonstrated in experiments conducted by Puthoff and Targ, and often only when there are repeated failure of the investigators to remove sensory cues. So the guys that were originally doing the project on remote viewing, Targ and Puthoff, they left sensory clues in their experiments. So someone that was able to kind of remote view, like if I told you, you know, I need you to guess what's behind this door, um, because the door, like the, behind what's door, the door number three, you're gonna you're gonna get a special prize out of. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, all right. I'm, then I ask you the question. So what door number is this? And then you say, oh, door number, door number three, door number three. I've already said it. I've already dropped a sensory yeah, cue yeah. for you to pick up. Yeah, yeah. Now they could have used it in a different way by smelling something. What's cooking in this thing right here? Yeah, that's the source your outcome. Yeah. So it's it's all about. Basically, yeah, changing the outcome or whatever the hypothesis is. Technically, it's messing with the result. So let's talk about the scientific reception. According to scientific research, clairvoyance is generally explained as the result of confirmation bias, expectancy bias, fraud, hallucination, self-delusion, sensory leakage, subjective validation, and wishful thinking, or failures to appreciate the base rate of chance occurrences and not as paranormal power. Sensory leakage, I like that. Sensory leakage. You're leaking your senses, mm -hmm. bro, all over my nice shag carpet. Sounds like some acid. <laughs> Parapsychology is regarded by the scientific community as a pseudoscience. In 1988, the U.S. National Research Council concluded the committee finds no science justification for research conducted over a period of 130 years for the existence of parapsychological phenomena. Skeptics say that if clairvoyance were a reality, it would have become abundantly clear. They also contended that those who believe in paranormal phenomena are so merely psychological reasons. According to David G. Myers of Psychology, the 8th edition, the search for valid and reliable tests of clairvoyance has resulted in thousands of experiments. One controlled procedure has invited senders to telepathically transmit one of four visual images to receivers deprived of sensation in a nearby chamber. The result, a reported 32% accurate response rate surpassing or surpassing the chance rate of 25%. But follow-up studies have, depending on who was summarizing the results, failed to replicate the phenomenon or produce mixed results. So, one skeptic magician, James Rondi, had a long-standing offer, now U.S. $1 million, to anyone who proves a genuine psychic power under proper observing conditions. French, Australian, and Indian groups have parallel offers of up to 200,000 euros to anyone with demonstrable paranormal abilities. Large as these sums are, the scientific seal of approval will be worth far more to anyone whose claims could be authenticated. To refute those who say there is no ESP, one need only produce a single person who can demonstrate a single re reproducible ESP phenomenon. So far, no such person has emerged. Randy's offer has been publicized for three decades and dozens of people have been tested, sometimes under the scrutiny of an independent panel of judges. Still nothing. People desire to believe in the paranormal is stronger than all the evidence that it does exist. This was by Susan Blackmore of Blackmore's First Law in 2004. So with all this in mind, what is your idea now that I've given you some information on clairvoyance? Do you still do you believe that there's an ability that people might have out there? Have your thoughts on clairvoyance changed at all from the beginning? Uh, no. I guess I just, you know, it's good to without any evidence. Reaffirm. It's hard to believe. Right, it is hard to believe, but it's the whole X Files thing. I want to believe. I think that one, this one though, I believe more than other you know types of topics but like this i would say there there is demonstrable evidence out there somewhere i'm almost positive of like certain things regarding esp or remote viewing or you know paranormal psychology or whatever or like astral projection i do i'm pretty positive there is some 
evidence out there. Um, it's just, like you said, it's an anomaly. So, like, being an anomaly, of being an anomaly means it wouldn't be apparent all the time. That's the whole point of an anomaly. So, it's not something that is happens all the time. It's a rare thing, you know? Not everyone has it. Only a couple people do. I just, it's, it, it fascinates me because I know some people that do have what seems to be a psychic ability or right. what you can interpret as that. And it's, it's really hard because if you don't experience it yourself, you're never going to know what it's like or you're never going to have a true firm belief in it. For sure. And it's, it's what keeps an open mind. And actually, I like it being out there. I don't think I'd ever want to find out the true factor if it is real or real or, you know, mm -hmm. real or not because... It's like, a, it's like a little gift. Like Some people have this extra ability. Some people have an extra ability to heal. Some people have an extra ability to sense things about somebody's personality or yeah. type of thing. And I mean, if we, we've all experienced deja vu, who's to say that just because we chalk it up to like a fake memory or a memory that's deep in our subconsciousness, maybe it is a psychic ability that we're able to hone in when we're a child and we kind of lose it within age after being kind of brought down or suppressed in a way by society and so many world factors that kind of toll on your mind. You end up forgetting how to work out that muscle or how to be carefree. Totes. Totes my goats. Totes my goats. Well, anybody that wants to look up clairvoyance and what the, maybe some examples, some cases that go on with it, it's something definitely to get interested in and maybe you can find out if you're a psychic yourself. Or send us your thoughts. Yeah, send us your thoughts. Wink. Yeah, with subliminal messaging. <laughs> Like, like literally abilities. send them to us. <laughs> well, thanks for listening to this episode of Fill in the Blank, and stay tuned for the next episode. The next episode. The next.